All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Make sure you check out Pig and a Pickle. Two locations are open seven days a week in Corte Madera from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they're open Wednesday through Sunday in Emeryville. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Well, today we're looking ahead to the NFL draft. And our good friend Jordan Elliott wrote a phenomenal piece uh, for Niners Nation talking about the importance of of, you know, we're trying to figure out who are the Niners going to take? You know, do we have any insight into, you know, who they may like going into uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday's NFL draft? And Jordan wrote a great piece about the importance of the of the top 30 pre-draft visits. Every team's allowed to, to visit with 30 guys every year going into the draft. And, um, you know, according to Jordan, it's been a, it's been a pretty reliable indicator of um, who the 49ers will select in a given draft. Just to put this in perspective, since Kyle Shanahan and um, and John Lynch arrived in 2017, the 49ers have selected multiple players who they've brought in on an official top 30 visit in each of the six drafts that they've conducted. Um, so each year, as I said, NFL teams are allotted a maximum of 30 pre-draft visits that allow teams to to bring in their res- to their respective facilities uh, prospects for kind of a little bit more of an in-depth look. Um, they can conduct physicals and have the prospects meet with the coaches. They're allowed to have them tour the facility, and and they can answer any questions that they still have. They can't work out, but um, they can do almost everything but work out. So if you look at it, and Jordan actually wrote this great piece kind of breaking it down going back in time and looking at past drafts and what they've done as far as guys that they have brought in for for what we call 30 top 30 visits under the current regime. Okay, so going back to 2017, the Niners brought in Reuben Foster. They drafted him in the first round. They brought in Akella Witherspoon. They drafted him in the third round. They brought in George Kittle. They took him in the fifth, and they brought in Nick Mullins, and they signed him after the draft as an undrafted free agent. So... Um, And then if you want to include Jordan Willis, who also had a pre-draft visit with the Niners that year, the Niners would go on and sign uh, Jordan Willis later on as a free agent. So that's quite a bit. Then 2018, Dante Pettis, Fred Warner, and Kamoko Ture all had pre-draft visits with the 49ers and all someday wound up being a 49er. Pettis and Warner in the draft, Ture as a free agent a couple years later. 2019, Nick Bosa came in, Debo Samuel came in, Jalen Hurd, Tim Harris, they all came in and met with the 49ers in their top 30 visits and then all wound up with the Niners. Um, 2020, Brandon Ayuk, Charlie Warner, and Salvan Ahmed, um, who was an undrafted free agent running back out of UW, they all came in and worked out. Um, and then 2021, Trey Lance, Trey Sermon, Diamador Lenore, um, were all top 30 visits, and then they all were drafted by the Niners. And then Connor Weddington was also a, a, a top 30 visit from Stanford, and they signed him to the practice squad later on. And then 2022, this last year's draft, Drake Jackson, Ty Davis-Price, Danny Gray, Spencer Burford, Kalia Davis, and Tay Martin all were visiting on, on top 30 visits with the Niners uh, that's what one, two, three, four, five draft picks and an undrafted free agent. So six of the guys they dra- they 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 brought in last year were guys they met on the the top thirty visits. So these top thirty visits are indeed an indicator of who the Niners are really looking at and guys that they're you know really considering drafting. Every team's got a different philosophy. Some teams' um, philosophy is, hey, you know, we'll look at a bunch of people and we'll bring them in to answer questions of guys we don't like. Some teams use it, I'm sure, as a smoke screen. Hey, we'll bring in guys we absolutely don't like. Other teams look at it as look at it, I'm sure, as hey, let's take a deeper dive on uh, prospects that we like and are considering drafting. Okay, that being said, here's the list of the players that the 49ers have reported as top 30 visits this year leading into this year's draft. And I'm going to go through the list and give you a few of them that I think absolutely could be 49ers and I think could be great fits. All right, there's three cornerbacks, Lance Boykin, cornerback from Coastal Carolina, Stephen Jones, a cornerback from Appalachian State, Terrell Smith, a cornerback from the University of Minnesota, 
was brought in. Jordan Howden, a safety who also played at Minnesota. Yaya Diaby, great name, Yaya, uh, defensive end from Louisville. Tavius Robinson, a defensive end from Ole Miss. Marte Mapu is one of my favorites. The linebacker, strong safety from Sacramento State. Uh, Cameron Latu, a tight end from Alabama. Antonio Maffi, an offensive lineman from UCLA. And DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson, the UCLA quarterback. So very interesting. And let's go into some of these guys. And, and I, you know, they're not all going to be Niners, but some of them are going to be. And let's just go into the list right away and 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 break it down for you um let's start with the cornerbacks lance boykin is a corner from coastal carolina my buddy rick mueller who i used to scout with in the canadian league is the recruiting coordinator at coastal carolina and they have gotten some outstanding uh players four-year players juco players transfer portal players um, Rick is is hustling for sure. Anyway, Boykin's from High Point, North Carolina. He's a 6'2", 200 pound corner, big long corner with big hands. Began his career um, at Old Dominion in 2018. Transferred to Coastal Carolina in 2022, or 2021, I should say, and became second team All Sun Belt Conference as a senior this last year. He um, definitely lacks some man to man cover skills. Definitely lacks deep speed. Uh, definitely best as a z- in a zone heavy scheme. He played 65% of his snaps at Coastal Carolina in zone. Um, a lot of people feel like Boykin at 6'2", 200 pounds, could convert to safety at some point. He was really well thought of. He was a two-star high school recruit, that's all. Um, but he's a boundary corner. He was the team captain for Coastal Carolina. Very competitive. Can play in a lot of different schemes. Um, 4.60 speed. So he's a 4.6 corner. That's not good speed. He's got really questionable deep speed. He's probably going to be a sixth round pick, maybe a seventh round pick. Um, he's, he, he's a, he's a competitive guy, super competitive and he'll battle you and he might have a future as a safety. Um, he's got some dominant traits as far as size and strength. He can definitely muscle receivers. But as far as deep speed, it isn't there. He might be best as a safety conversion. Um, but Lance Boykin is a guy they brought in. Interesting name. I don't think they're going to wind up with Boykin, but that's just a guess. Okay, so the other corners that they brought in, let's talk about Stephen Jones. I think Stephen Jones could very well wind up as a 49er. I really like this player. Played at Appalachian State. Uh, according to Ryan Fowler of the Draft Network, the Niners met with him. 5'9", 180-pound corner, so he's just, you know, nothing to uh, nothing to look at as far as size. Just basically, uh, you know, 5'10", 180, 5'9", 180, that's your, that's your average size. And, the, you know, that's a little on the smaller side, to be honest. Ran 4'5", 3". Uh, he's another kid from North Carolina, Rockingham, North Carolina. And... Um, you know, he's, he's a really interesting player. He's a scrappy player. Uh, I like this player a lot. Probably a fifth-round pick, slot corner, nickel corner, great feet, great hips, super smart player, sniffs out screens, really good ball skills, tough. This guy's scrappy against the run. He's tough. He's hyper-athletic, hyper-aggressive. He won't back down. Uh, Looked great at the NFL PA Collegiate All-Star Game. Had a couple picks that week in practice. Looked good in the game. Uh, As I said, fifth-round pick. Probably going to help out on special teams to begin. Blocked a couple punts in 2018. Two-time All-Sun Belt Conference the last few years. Um, And in this last year, he's he's played his best football. He led the Sun Belt Conference with 15 passes defensed. So... Doesn't have great size. Going to be a day three corner. Says round five here. Wouldn't be surprised me if he even went later, maybe round six or round seven. But I like this player. I mean, this guy's going to make your football team. Steven Jones, Appalachian State. Uh, Good ball skills. Super cocky. Super like it ain't going down this way. He's just a tough kid. He's a tough kid who will battle you, doesn't have great size, but I like him. I, to me, Stephen Jones would make their football team, and he could be a late day three guy. So just another guy to keep your eye on there, Stephen Jones. All right, let's go to the next one. Terrell Smith, the corner from University of Minnesota. Six feet, 204 pounds. It's a bigger player from Snellville, Georgia. Um, I love Terrell Smith, man. 4-4-1 speed. 
um, good, uh, you know, down the field on vertical routes. He's got a 1.5, 10-yard split, great quickness, good strength, 14 reps at 225. Um, was voted University of Minnesota's most outstanding defensive player as a freshman. And just the combination. He's got size. He's got speed. He's got toughness. Um, and you really improved a lot in 2022. Solid footwork, really experienced player. Um, you know, press man corner, you know, plays angry against the run. This guy will step up and knock you silly. I think he's a good outside corner. Could be a safety in the future. He's that physical. You know, he's got some weakness. He's, he's, you know, he's, he, he's, uh, he does have great length and quick feet. Um, great feet to, to, to stop and turn. Corner feet, you know, you want great feet for your corners. And this guy's got terrific feet. He's, he is a little susceptible to double moves. Like if you're one of these guys that, you know, uh, Hunter Renfro or Danny Amendola, you're one of these guys that just can – just twist corners into a pretzel with double and triple moves. Cooper Cup. He's going to have a hard time staying with those guys. He's not quite that refined. But physical, strong, fast, aggressive. Um, this guy's good. I really like uh, Terrell Smith. So um, I think he's probably a round four guy, maybe round five. But that's a good player. And I would not be surprised at all if Terrell Smith wound up for the 49ers. All right, let's jump to Jordan Howden. He's the free safety on the same team from University of Minnesota. He lacks deep speed, and he's a little stiff. He's 6 feet, 205 pounds. He's from San Diego, ran 4.49. But when you watch the, the film, I don't think he plays to that speed. To me, he looks a little slow. He's strong. I mean, he's got good instincts, pretty strong, 14 reps two tw- at, of 225. Very experienced player, 49 career starts, kind of gets everybody lined up, right? Team captain. There's a lot to like. I just don't see special coverage traits. I see a somewhat stiff um, safety. Started as a corner, believe it or not. Just kept getting bigger. Pretty yoked up uh, at this point. So to me, he looks a little stiff in coverage, but um, I could see him as an undrafted free agent coming to the 49ers. He's played a lot. He's got good instincts. Team captain makes a lot of plays, but he doesn't. To me, he's not field fast, and I kind of question the coverage ability. Um, let's get to Yaya Diaby because I could definitely see the Niners grabbing Diaby. I think he's a he's a guy they could take with one of their picks in the third round. Um, Cincinnati defensive end, 6'3", 263, really strong hands, unbelievable motor. Uh, what I love is he's he marries the two. He's a JUCO kid. Who you know went the ju- junior college route, um, ran four five one in the 40, 37 and a half inch vertical, at two hundred and sixty three pounds. Th- those are great numbers. Uh, four five speed at that weight. I mean, if you watch him, he's flying off the edge, super explosive, very competitive. Nine sacks this last year. So you look at that four five one at two hundred and sixty three pounds, and you look at that thirty seven inch vertical, and you see the really strong hands that he plays with. And you're just like, you know, is Diaby productive? And then you look at the film, and he is. He's very productive. He's very athletic. Um, you know, to me, a long arm guy who's got a great motor. Uh, to me, I think Diaby is going to be a really solid NFL pass rusher. And I think they'll look at him real seriously with their picks at the end of the third round. I would not be surprised if Yaya Diaby was a 49er. All right, let's let's get to the rest of the list. There's some other guys that are on this list that are really interesting as well. One of them that I really like and that I didn't really notice until late in the process is the Ole Miss defensive end, Tavius Robinson. And Robinson is a defensive end, fifth-year senior, uh, took that extra year of eligibility due to COVID and, and uh, took it to full advantage this year. Uh, he's a kid from Canada, from Ontario, He's 6'6", 257, prototypical size. 4'6", 6 off the edge, 1'6", 3 on a 10-yard split. Shows you how quick he is. 23 reps at 225. That's plenty strong. Great all-around athlete. This guy lettered in football, basketball, and track in high school. Um, started uh, playing, played two years in Canada, in two years in college in Canada, in Ontario, and then signed with Ole Miss in 2020. 
Um, and then his career really took off this year. He was second in all of the FBS with five forced fumbles. He had six sacks, 44 tackles, uh, eight tackles for loss uh, in 13 games. Heavy-handed guy, big frame, very quick, very agile. Um, what this kid's got, you can't teach. I mean, he can convert speed to power. And um, I think he's almost perfectly made for, you know, he's not a guy that's going to play head up over the tackle. You want to shade him outside. He is. He would be great in this wide nine front. Not only is, it, does he, is he 6'6", 260, but he's got a killer motor. Great uh, bloodlines. Dad played 10 years in the Canadian League. He needs to get stronger at the point of attack, but, man, Tavius Robinson is the kind of guy that could easily wind up in the seventh round of the draft. He could show up in Santa Clara day one, and people could be like, what? This guy went in the seventh round? you got to be kidding me. I mean, he really looks the part. Um, you know, you're 6'6", 257 with long arms, very angular, very huge hands, huge frame, may even have the frame to add weight. But I don't, to me, he's, a, he's at a perfect weight right now. Really like this guy. I mean, to me, this is going to be a sleeper pick. The fact that they looked at Tavius Robinson, fifth year, fifth year senior, um, I really like him. I really like him. To me, this is a seventh round steal. This guy is just coming into his own right now. He just played the best year of his career right here. He, you know, he didn't play until later. Uh, very raw to begin, but man, he needs to get stronger. Upper body strength, lower body strength. He needs to do a better job against the run. Doesn't really anchor well against the run. But who cares? I mean, this guy's six six, two fifty seven, and fires up the field. Long arms. Uh, goes goes after the quarterback. Uh, you know this this is gonna this guy would be an awesome six round pick, an incredible seventh round pick. I uh, really like Tavius Robinson. To me, you're getting a player that best football is all coming up right now. Uh, a couple other guys that I mentioned that are on these thirty visits: Marte Mapu from Sac State who's not an every down linebacker. He's not a second. He's not a strong safety. He's a guy who's kind of a, he's a stack backer who's best in the sub package playing pass coverage, but he's damn good at it. I, he can defend the tight end. This guy may be the answer to Travis Kelsey. If Marte Mapu is there in the seventh round or day three, you got to look at him from Sac State. He's just too productive. Cameron Latu from Alabama. I'm not a huge fan of his. He's big and strong, but, um, you know, I just there's a lot of holes in his game. There's t- there's so many better tight ends in this draft than Cameron Latu, but they did look at him. Uh, they did look at DTR. And we've talked a lot about uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson. You know, tons of experience, very athletic. Um, really played his best football this last year for for Chip Kelly. Um, you know, was he's kind of a rhythm player. When he's in rhythm, he looks great. When he's not in rhythm, he doesn't. This year, every time he was out there, for the most part, he was in pretty good rhythm. So DTR is definitely a set, an ascending player. Would not shock me at all if they wound up with DTR. Now, why am I a little skeptical? Just because there's been three public reportings of the Niners meeting with DTR. And to me, that that at this point, that may be a smokescreen. I, I kind of have of the belief that if they've met with him three times, they may like Jay Kaner or Clayton Toon or Max Duggan, you know what I mean? Um, or you know, just another, a different quarterback besides DTR. But they did bring in DTR for a visit, and history says that that's a major indicator of, um, of guys that they draft. All right, one more guy that we've got to throw in here that I think absolutely could be a phenomenal day three pick for the 49ers. And there's a local angle. Uh, Antonio Maffi, the UCLA offensive guard, who blocked for Zach Charbonnet this year, um, showed up at UCLA at 411 pounds, played a lot this year at, at 355 pounds, showed up at the UCLA Pro Day at a svelte 329. He's six foot four is, is, is his frame. This guy led the, you know, UCLA led the Pac 12 in rushing yards per game. The last two seasons that um, that Mafi has been on their offensive line, 
and they, they averaged six yards per carry as a team. This guy opened huge run lanes for Zach Charbonnet. And, you know, he, he's an interesting player. He was a three-star high school recruit. He went to Sarah. That's right. Sarah, Sarah High School in San Mateo. Um, so he's a local kid from San Mateo. And I think this is this is a this would be a day three steal for the 49ers. He allowed nine hurries as a senior, two quarterback hits and three sacks in 849 snaps. He played left guard as a senior, played in the East West Shrine game, impressed there. Um, definitely a raw player, but a dominant run blocker. What I love about him, he's a former defensive lineman came to UCLA as a nose guard and he's got, he's, he's a raw player. Uh, but that also means that he's going to get nothing but better. I love this player as a developmental player. He's got really long arms. He can pull, believe it or not at, at three fifty, he could still locate athletes in space and pick them off at three twenty nine. I think he's rounding into, um, you know, the best shape of his life. I think his best football is coming right now. The power that this guy shows in the run game is off the charts. As I said, he began as a defensive lineman. He was a nose guard, switched to the offensive line in 2020. Um, he's smart. He's a hard worker. He's raw. Uh, but he, th- w- what I really love is, is this guy is durable, played all the games, Never was hurt. When he was hurt, he still played. Um, but he's nasty. He has got a nasty streak to him. He's got a physical side to him. This guy is looking to bury you. Um, I love that in offensive linemen. I love the offensive linemen who, uh, first of all, I love the converted defensive linemen that are now offensive linemen. Love that. Love that trait. Why? Because the better athletes wind up on defense. And guys who have a defensive disposition – uh, that means they like they like the physical nature of the game. I like offensive linemen who used to be defensive linemen. They they like the contact. They're usually better athletes. Moffy is now you know six four three thirty, dominating run blocker. I think he would be a he could potentially play right tackle. I think he could play right guard. Um, but I just want guys with this kind of disposition in my offensive line room. This guy will pancake your ass. I mean, he is really, he is really, really good, really, really fun to watch. Nasty, physical, um, you know, power personified in the run game. And then you mix in the hard worker, the work ethic, the the intelligence, the instincts, the durability, the long arms. Yeah, this guy's my guy. Antonio Maffi, UCLA. Probably going to be a six-round pick. If you watch Charbonnet, Charbonnet was running downhill, had a lot of open space. This guy created that space. So there you go. That's their list of top 30 guys. Um, probably my favorite guys in that list are Antonio Maffi, Yaya Diaby, um, Tavius Robinson. But, man, Maffi could be an absolute find for the 49ers on that offensive line. The one, the to me, the one underrated aspect of offensive linemen is show me guys who are really tough. Show me guys who are, you know, have that physical demeanor. Show me guys that are nasty and and want to bury the guy on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Those guys tend to do well, and Moffy's that kind of guy. So to me, I'm looking for him day three of the draft. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being a proud sponsor of the Krug Show, and make sure you check them out in Corte Madera and in Emeryville. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in Northern California, and thanks for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.